Hi friends, my name is Maruti and I'm the co-founder of Kraku. In this video, I'll be answering one question which is uh, often asked to me by aspiring MBA uh, students, which is uh, with respect to the future paths that uh, students typically follow after they finish their MBA from IIMs. Now, if you look at uh, IIMs, most of the IIMs don't have any specialization. They provide uh, general MBA. In many cases, it is a diploma in business management. Now, most of the courses in uh, first year for all the students of the top MBA institutes will be the same. Uh, in second year, you get to choose your specialization. Somebody who is interested in finance, somebody who wants to get into an investment bank would probably select uh, most of the electives in finance. Somebody who is interested in marketing, somebody who is looking at a marketing role or a sales and marketing kind of a role will choose many electives in marketing. So typically, most of the students uh, in after MBA choose one of the three paths. One is getting into finance. Finance has two divisions. One is investment banking, the other is capital markets. Uh, the second uh, big stream is consulting where they can join a very big uh, consulting, uh, tier one consulting like say McKinsey, BCG, Bain. And there are also some tier two consults which actually come there. Uh, the third path that people choose is marketing where you can join a big uh, MNC like say HUL or PNG. And there is a fourth uh, path which is uh, with respect to general management where you join a big company like say TAS that is Tata Administrative Service or uh, something uh, like say Aditya Birla. Now these are basically the typical paths that students follow. There are many students who also uh, become entrepreneurs like I myself have become an entrepreneur and many of my batchmates also have started their own companies. But uh, if you are not looking for entrepreneurship, these are the paths that uh, students typically follow, which is investment banking, consulting, uh, general management and marketing. There are in the first year, normally there is no di uh, differentiation between students. All of them take more or less the same courses. And in the second year, you get a lot of freedom to choose your electives and based on your interest or your aspirations, which field you want to get into, that is when you actually start making the difference. That is when you start uh, selecting those electives. This is with respect to the first question. Uh, the second question is, what are some of the key skills and knowledge areas that MBA graduates from IIMs acquire during the program? This is a very interesting question. In my opinion, you don't learn a lot of things uh, academically. Academically, because I feel that many of the students who actually enter into these IIMs are already fairly well driven. They are also fairly uh, mature and smart. So if you give them the book, they can actually read it and they can understand it. But what they actually learn, what I myself have actually learned are the soft skills. Soft skills would uh, involve something like say, how do you actually manage a group? If there are a group, you have a lot of group assignments and you have a lot of work that has to be done in a group. Now, many times it so happens that uh, in the stress that is uh, part of your MBA program, the group sometimes will not work as efficiently as it can. Now, after some experience, you actually figure out what is the best way in which you can motivate each other. What is the best way in which you can actually get things done? That I think is uh, some skill that is very important in uh, that is learned in an MBA institute. Those soft skills. How do you talk to people? How do you approach? Uh, uh, there are many networking events that happen with respect to placements. Many of the companies that come have a lot of these sessions. They have some private sessions uh, where they call all the shortlisted people. There you have to go and uh, talk to all the partners. So these are skills which are very important where you know how to network in a smooth manner. Initially, you're not at all sure. You are very uh, confused. You also feel very awkward in actually going and approaching somebody. But after the second or the third one, once you see some of your uh, batchmates uh, figuring it out, you also learn uh, those tricks and you also become slightly smoother in actually approaching the uh, corporate uh, clientele. This is the second aspect. All of these things, if you look at it, are based uh, with respect to uh, the soft skills. They're not the technical hard skills. For example, I worked for a few years in an investment bank immediately after I am. But most of the finance stuffs I learned on my own. I went to classes, I was a good student there, but uh, whatever was needed, whatever formulas were needed, whatever theorems were needed, I could have learned them by reading the book. There was no real reason for me to go to a very big MBA institute, pay a lot of fees to actually learn all of these uh, technical details. But the soft skills where you know how to actually work in a group, how to actually lead a group, where if there is a difference of opinions, how to actually resolve it. Because you get to do so many things in an MBA institute in uh, a team of say five or six people, uh, these kind of uh, soft skills develop quite a lot. That, uh, in my opinion, is the biggest uh, takeaway that I had uh, from an MBA institute, what I actually learned. What are the opportunities for international exposure and global career prospects after completing MBA from IIMs? Many of the uh, companies, many of the big companies that come offer roles which are abroad. Many of my batchmates also after working for uh, a couple of years uh, in India, they were able to find uh, jobs abroad and uh, many of them are actually working abroad. Many of the guys that I know are not actually working in, uh, say, California. There are some people who are working there. 
but all across the world i see many of my batchmates who are some of them are in ireland many of them are in dubai many of them are in singapore hong kong uh, many of them are actually in us but not really in california they are distributed all across us many of them went to canada so all of these guys after working for some of them actually got job uh, abroad their initial opening job itself was abroad but many of the other guys also after working for a year or two they were able to figure out uh, find jobs and they were able to go abroad it is basically uh, up to you uh, but uh, the opportunities will always be there in addition to it if you're looking for international exposure uh, one thing that many of my batchmates actually did was uh, they went to foreign exchange in their second year in foreign exchange and they had a lot of fun many of these guys went together they went on essentially a euro trip many of them had uh, this they spent one term that is i think around 2 months in some sort of a european uh, mba institute and students from uh, those institutes came to india to our institute and many of the students from my institute went abroad that also is a very nice international exposure that you have and uh, not necessarily with respect to placements but it is uh, an international exposure as such which again i'm sure would have helped them like when i was telling you about how uh, working in teams working in uh, these groups helped me later on much later on similarly i think when they spent a few months on their own abroad i think that would have helped them uh, acclimatize to those surroundings better to that culture better so when they finally get a job uh, abroad i think they would have uh, found it much easier this experience would have definitely helped them later on how do i am support students in terms of networking and building professional connections i think i am networks are very good very underrated especially if you haven't gone to an im uh, many people don't really understand how big it is so for example once we started cracko i'll just give you a personal example once we started cracko when we are looking to raise funds uh, again i don't really know any vcs when we first started there you hear about all of these big vcs but you don't really know how to approach them but what i realized was that in most of these vcs uh, in this venture capital vc is a venture capital firms there was some one or the other who went to one of the ims or knew a friend of mine from uh, one of these ims so it was very easy for me because of this alum network whenever i needed uh, to get a foot into the door uh, ultimately we did not raise any money but uh, we got interviews with nearly all the venture capital firms just based on the alum network basically i had to ping some alum or the other and he would get me introduced to many of these uh, venture capital guys so it was easy for me to start a conversation with them otherwise it is very difficult for me to really approach these guys other other than cold call but because the alum network is so strong and so powerful uh, whichever company you want for example if i had to close a deal if i am working in some other company if i am having a different startup and say i needed some contact from a big company like hql i'm sure there will be many uh, batchmates of mine who are in leadership positions in hql so i just need to figure out their contact and then uh, send them a message or in any company any big company that you want access to there will be either somebody either in your batch or one two years senior or one two years junior that is priceless especially they will ensure that the door at least is open then you have to go there and you have to do a good job where you do your presentation well you convince them that whatever you are uh, wanting or whatever you have is worth it but at least the opening of the door will definitely happen because of the alum network which i think is a blessing in itself how do mba graduates and iims fare in terms of salary and compensation package this question is often asked but in general i don't like it because uh, you are going to an mba uh, you are going to an iim you are going to do your mba to have a career you are not going there for your starting package i think if you are focused on your starting package that is a very myopic way of looking at it it is a very short term uh, way of looking at things many students do that unfortunate uh, but that is not uh, going to make you happy because you have to focus on the career you have to focus on which industry you are actually interested in because if you do a good job in any industry at the end of the day you will make enough money money will not be an issue uh, if you go into a top mba institute that is definitely not a question so you should not really worry about how much uh, whether you are getting x rupees or you are getting say 1.25x at the starting it doesn't matter because x itself will be sufficiently high for all your material needs unless you want to go to maldives every month or every two months other than that if you want to live a comfortable very comfortable upper middle class life in india i think going to any of these top mba institutes will uh, more than suffice so then you have to focus on uh, the career that is the sector that you actually want to get into what is the sector that drives you what is the sector that you are interested in where do you see yourself in 10 years that question you might not know the answer right now but you will know the answer to it or at least you will have a much better idea when you are in the second year of mba when you already have a lot of exposure you see a lot of your seniors you talk to them you attend a lot of these presentations so you understand what are the kind of jobs that many of these companies are actually providing then you can actually figure out based on your skill set what is the career that you are looking for do you want to get into investment banking do you want to start up do you want to get into uh, consulting do you want to get into marketing all of these things you can actually figure out now 
before I end it, I also want to give you a brief uh, pros and cons with respect to the four uh, fields that I mentioned. With respect to finance, finance is of uh, two, uh, mostly there are two types of roles. One is with respect to investment banking and the second one is capital markets. Investment banking basically involves uh, mergers and acquisitions. So if there is a big uh, merger or a big acquisition that is happening, an investment bank will be or an IPO that is happening. An investment bank will typically be working on this IPO and that investment bank will have a small team of say seven to eight people. There'll be one big guy, there'll be two, three mid-level managers and there'll be four or five associates who'll be working on a deal. Now this is part of the investment banking. Now initially a person will start off as that associate who is at the bottom most uh, layer and after a few years, after getting promotions, he will uh, hopefully end up at the top. Now, investment banking makes a lot of money, that is true, but it involves uh, crazy amounts of work. The work-life balance, I think, is completely skewed, but you get a lot of money. And many people actually like it also. Uh, many people actually enjoy that uh, rush, that thrill. There's also a lot of, uh, for lack of a better word, power in it, where basically you get to see the happenings of big, big IPOs. You are at the center of it, the thick of it, if you get a good uh, job in an investment bank. So many people really thrive in it, but it involves crazy work-life balance. The work-life balance is completely skewed, but you make good money, you are in the thick of actual finance. Actual finance, the movers and shakers in India and in abroad uh, will be part of this investment bank. Now, capital markets, on the other hand, will be slightly more relaxed. You work only when the stock market is open. You basically, uh, it involves trades. You are trading basically on the stock market. You have complex trades also. This is basically the job of a capital markets guy. Uh, he'll trade across either currencies or equities or commodities, different different aspects. But basically, this involves trading on a stock exchange uh, on public companies mostly. And this is much more relaxed, much more relaxed with respect to the timings. It is also stressful because you can get your profits and your losses. And the money is also pretty good. Money you can't really complain. The money also is pretty decent, but it is much more relaxed. The difference between investment banking and capital markets is, uh, from a career standpoint is that investment banking will uh, get you a lot of uh, exit opportunities later on because of the contacts that you have because of the work that you have done you can after three four years if you don't like investment banking you can easily get a uh, switch into another big company uh, basically you'll be working with uh, many of these companies like i mentioned so you will uh, many people find it very easy to actually switch from investment banking to another uh, corporate job this is the advantage in capital markets on the other hand unfortunately i don't think you'll get a lot of exit opportunities you either uh, like it and you survive and you make money you work for a few years maybe 15 20 years and then you retire. That is basically what a capital markets guy would be hoping for. This is with respect to finance. Consulting on the other hand is similar to investment banking where again uh, you'll be consulting big big projects. Uh, you'll also have uh, the, a very clear pecking order. There'll be one partner, then there'll be some uh, associate partners, there'll be some uh, bottom guy who will be an associate. Very similar to investment banking. Again the work-life balance is pretty skewed. Consulting in top of work-life balance also involves a lot of travel. Many times you have to go to the place of your client for the week and over the weekend, you fly back to your base station, which uh, is probably okay when you're young. But after five, six years, when you are, uh, say, your 30s, you have a, you're married, you have a family, then it becomes uh, slightly lonely. And also, it uh, I don't think is healthy in the long run. How long can you live in a very good hotel? It is a very good hotel, but you have to live in a hotel. You have to eat outside. Uh, you will be missing your family. So that is not something which is sustainable, but in my opinion, but many of my friends have actually done very well. They are, uh, some of them have become big, big partners in McKinsey's and BCG's. So that also is there, but uh, you'll have to look at it. The money again is pretty good. Don't have to worry about it. The third one is marketing, where uh, initially probably you'll work in sales, but after a year or two, you'll be switching to marketing, where you'll be leading many of these marketing campaigns of uh, big companies, like I mentioned, the biggest uh, marketing company or the most sought out marketing company is HUL and PNG. So any of the uh, launches that they're doing, any of the campaigns that they're going to run, you'll definitely be a part of it, which again is pretty nice. Uh, you get uh, some sort of a uh, fund, uh, you'll have a budget and you'll have to work on it and ensure that the campaign uh, runs smoothly. Money in marketing is not very high, but again, like I mentioned earlier, money should not be an issue when you're choosing your career. You will not struggle. You'll have sufficient money to live a very comfortable life, but it would not be as high as somebody who is working in an investment bank or in consulting. Finally, the last one is with respect to general management, uh, where you get into TAS, that is TAS, or you get into IT Billa. Uh, there is a leadership program in IT Billa. So the way it works is uh, in TAS, for example, you will be rotating across different different companies of uh, Tata Group. You will be, I think, working for maybe a year or two in each of these companies, and you will be groomed. Uh, and if you perform well in each of these rotations, essentially, uh, you are taken into a mother uh, company, a bigger company, and then you start going up. Now, the aim of this TAS or all the people that they recruit, they recruit only six to seven people every year. The aim is that at the end of uh, many years, you should become the CEO of one of these startup companies. That is the leadership uh, grooming that happens in TAS. 
and it is again a very sort of tough job because again look at the opportunity that uh, you are getting you get to work in different different tata groups for maybe a few years at one go so that you learn the business through and through and if you do a good job you'll keep getting promoted and hopefully you'll become the ceo of one of the tata groups which is uh, again this is a very well sort of tough uh, job uh, task money is again not very bad it is not exceptional but it is pretty good uh, task also gives you good money but again not as high as investment bank or consulting but again this is a very well sort of tough role which again i really like uh, because at the end of the day if you do well there is a very clear path uh, ahead of you you have to just uh, put your head down and work well and then you can become the ceo of a big company this is with respect to the opportunities that are available uh, after your 2 years in mba if you have any doubts with respect to any of the things that i mentioned please do mention as a comment below this video i'll try to answer all of them and uh, students who are preparing for mba know that crack is providing a lot of free material we provide daily targets which are taken by thousands of students every single day we are providing the previous papers of all the mba exams we are providing previous papers of cat zat snap cmat all of them completely for free with detailed video solutions the link for the detailed video solutions is also provided in the pdf after every question in the pdf there is a button if you click on the button you will be redirected to the video solution so make the best use of all of this free stuff in addition to it we are also providing one free mock which has complete detailed video solution in cat zat snap all of them all of these exams are in the latest pattern so definitely make use of them and uh, prepare well i hope you do well and uh, join a very good uh, mba institute in the coming year